Hey, I'm Super Fizz. It is October 24th, 2024. That date is actually pretty important because this exact video will be good for about 28 days. Um, the good news is I'm going to continue to update the resources that you'll copy and paste. So uh, hopefully it will work a lot longer than that because gosh, redoing stuff is hard. This is my third attempt at doing this video today because something always doesn't work. Um, if something doesn't work today, I'm just going to work through it and um, you'll just have to believe me that it works. Um, yeah, so today we're going to talk about the Ephemery Testnet. It is a very new testnet for Ethereum and the greatest thing about it is that it resets every 28 days. This means that testnet ether are very easy to come by and that you can do goofy stuff on the network and not worry about it sticking around forever. Like you can launch silly contracts, you can launch validators and neglect them, you can do anything you want and it's not going to leave a lasting impact for other people. So that's really cool. I really do look forward to some kind of games with Ephemery in the long run, but we're not there yet. We're just still getting started. So the home for Ephemery is ephemery.dev, uh, but we're not going to begin there. We're going to begin at my GitHub, uh, uh, github.com slash superfizz slash ephemery. Uh, I took directions that Tess developed and I just iterated on them until they worked really smoothly for me. And now I want to share them with you today. I'm beginning on a Ubuntu uh, Linux um, 24.04.1 desktop edition. Um, that's a very specific edition, but I think you can also use 22.04.5 um, or uh, the server edition. The only difference with the server edition is it makes copying and pasting harder, but um, it will make it will be more it will use resources more efficiently as a validator. So yeah, uh, let's see what these notes say. I intend to just walk through these notes with you. This will out become outdated very quickly. I will. I do intend to update the GitHub repo, even if I don't recreate the video frequently. Uh, the greatest thing about Ephemery, everything is free. You don't have to pay for Ether. Um, the instructions, the guides, everything is free. The only thing you'll need to come up with on your own is a computer to run the software. Um, there are VPSs, um, I don't like AWS or Hetzner that are maybe $6 a month. Um, yeah, this is being done. Yes. On 24.04. The only things I've already done is install some, uh, dependencies for virtual box editions before I started this video. And, uh, you can see they're already up. Um, you don't have to install virtual box editions. Uh, it doesn't hurt though. So what is the big picture here? Running an Ethereum validator uh, is about three pieces of software. It's an execution client that we used to call, or maybe we still call an ETH1 client, uh, a consensus client uh, called an ETH2 client, and a validator client. Uh, there's a lot more depth to go into this, and I'm not going to do it right now. Um, but in general, the execution client manages contracts and transactions. The consensus client manages the chain, and the validator client manages validators. All three of these work together to give you uh, an Ethereum validator or an Ethereum node if you're just using a uh, consensus and execution client. Um, for this demonstration, we're going to use Geth, but because of client diversity, I strongly suggest using a different uh, execution client. Um, because Ephemery is so early, all of the execution clients haven't been tooled for it yet, so we're just not there. Um, you can see on clientdiversity.org, developed by Hany Abu, that currently we think about 52% of nodes are using Geth. That doesn't make Geth the best. Um, it makes Geth kind of overweighted. In an ideal distribution, we'd have each of these clients with a fair market share um, so that if one of them fails, everything else keeps going. In terms of consensus clients, uh, you can see we have a much better balance and Lodestar is represented currently by 0.0%. That doesn't make it a bad client. It's actually a fantastic client and I've really enjoyed using it. Um, and again, here we're looking for balance, not for any one client to have a majority. Um, so I should have done all that talking while I'm installing dependencies. All I'm gonna do in this guide is pretty much copy and paste things. Um, that wasn't supposed to happen. Let's try again. Or we're going to do an update. 
I may change those directions first to include an update first. It looks like some of the sources were outdated uh, and that's no big deal. This will still work, um, but I should have run an update before uh, requesting these uh, packages. Yeah, and I will add that in the instructions. I'll add an update uh, here at the top. Um, I literally just tested this last night and it was perfect. So um, no big deal. So we're installing uh, Go, curl, git, uh, Java runtime, make, uh, GNU C compiler, Python 3, just some dependencies. At this moment, I don't know why we need JRE, um, but I'm not gonna question it because like I said, I had it working um, and once you get instructions that work well, tinkering with them is a little, um, like it would basically require me to remove that one dependency and try and look and see where it was needed. It's a good idea, but uh, I'm not, I don't have the time for that right now. So we got those dependencies and now we're gonna install node. Hey, if you look at this guide and you see that I haven't added um, uh, sudo apt update there, um, shoot me a message because when I get done with this video, I'm going to post it and I have to run an important errand. I'm definitely going to forget to do that. Um, okay, so we did node and now we're going to do yarn. So the last time I did this, well, I don't, I don't want to skip too far ahead. Um, all right, so this is important. This is uh, the latest release of the ephemery testnet config files. We are on ephemery instance 139 now. Um, and so this script, if you look at it, it pulls ephemery 139. In 28 days, we're gonna go to ephemery 140 and that will need to change. I believe for the most part, that's the only digit that actually has to change in this guide for it to work uh, in after 28 days. So if you go to that um, latest release and find out that we're on a different version of ephemery, you can just update that. Uh, and so this is a JWT key. JWT key, it allows uh, the consensus and execution clients to talk to each other. We're gonna download geth. Now when I ran geth earlier, uh, I ended up like giving up the video because something didn't work. Um, I'm not sure what it was, but it had to do with the permissions. I'm gonna, let me do a list long var lib and let's see who owns that. Why isn't it created? Uh, sudo make direct, oh, no, that shouldn't even need a parent. Okay, it exists. And now I'm gonna give, okay. Um, I'm just double checking that. You only need to copy and paste it once. Like I said, when I started earlier, something did not work with geth permissions. Um, okay, so we have initialized geth with ephemery settings. This is okay. Um, now we're going to initialize the geth data directory. Great. And let's see. Now we're going to create a system service for Geth. Um, one of the things that concerns me a little bit is um, that when I start Geth, it's going to take some system resources. It's going to slow my whole system down. That's kind of par for the course. I would almost like to wait until later to do it so I'm not uh, wasting resources but it's also important to follow the guide in order so we don't skip steps. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start geth. Probably gonna see that error again. Yeah, geth failed, but I don't know why. Um, and last time when I did that, I went and I copied this again and I ran it again and then it worked. I'm not sure why that difference is there but I hope that by the time you see it, yeah, now it's working. I hope by the time you see it, I've worked that out um, and it works for you. Um, if it doesn't, I mean, you can do what I just did. Uh, you can copy that and paste it again. I think something here is changing those permissions and I'm just not sure what it is. So the good news is Geth is running right now. Um, let's see. Looking for peers and because this network just started 51 minutes ago, 
Um, it may take it a long time to find peers. That is totally okay. Uh, it's no worries. Um, and it doesn't see the beacon chain client. We're about to install Lodestar, uh, the beacon chain client, consensus client. They all mean the same thing. Beacon chain client, consensus client, and ETH2 client, exact same things. Uh, so I'm going to press control C here to close that. This is still running in the background as a system process. So uh, it's it's not going, it's a system daemon, a system daemon process. It's not going anywhere. Um, and now I can begin installing the consensus client. Again, we're installing Lodestar. Uh, it's written TypeScript and unlike Geth, they do not distribute a binary. So we're gonna have to compile this. It will take a few minutes. They do encourage using their Docker image, um, but in testing, I don't use a lot of Docker because uh, I have more trouble getting into it and tinkering around with it. Um, so uh, yes, the Docker image is encouraged. I'm gonna be doing this as a system daemon file so that I can uh, be more hands-on with it on the system. Right now we are downloading um, the Lodestar client from GitHub. And then we're going to build it. Wow, that's all one command. Um, this will probably take five minutes. Um, so Lodestar is a really interesting client. It is not one of the Ethereum Genesis uh, beacon chain clients. It actually came, I think it did its formal launch in 2023. Um, they were with us during launch, but they were working on different tooling stuff. Um, and they just didn't launch a full Lodestar client until um, around 2023. And now they are considered a full client, a fully inclusive client. They're listed everywhere on the launch pad. Um, but because they started so late, they don't have a lot of market share. Um, they are a very powerful client and I really encourage you to uh, give them a shot, learn more about them. Um, and this is a great opportunity to play with it. Speaking of which, if you're looking at Ephemery, um, speaking of communities, looking at um, ephemery.dev, if you scroll down here and look for the matrix group, and I really should go over all of these resources. I don't know if I'll have time. Now's a good time. Uh, this matrix group is a really neat place to hang out. Um, I'm using a chat client called Element. Matrix is uh, just, uh, you know, if essentially a Discord style um, chat messaging system or signal. Um, to look at these resources really quick, the project repo, Genesis repo, scripts, transaction explorer. So this is important. This is for Ethereum one or um, ETH one transactions. This is for the beacon chain. This is where we'll view our validator. Uh, Checkpoint sync is a way to uh, sync historical data very quickly. Um, execution remote procedure calls. This is uh, what you can use to um, in, uh, to transact with the network without really having a full node. Um, the faucets are very important. Um, I really like uh, PK910's proof of work faucet. We'll be hitting that later. Uh, and again, like I mentioned, the matrix group. Um, these are config files. Uh, one thing I skipped over is we're gonna add this to MetaMask later when we get there. Um, Ephemery, to the best of my knowledge, is currently supported by um, Ethereum DevOps um, and um, ETH Staker. Uh, yeah, sorry. I've, uh, and so there is actually a little bit of funding available. So I'll, I'll be honest, I was I, re I remember that it is PK910 and Remy, and there's a third person who is deeply involved. Oh, it's Mario Havel. Um, so Mario Havel, PK910, and Remy Roy are the three contributors that I'm most familiar with uh, who are um, running Ephemery. Um, and I'm also very excited to participate with um, kind of helping them get the word out. Um, so we're still in this yarn build stage. And, um, oh, so I want to show you something else. One thing that uh, may or may not be completed by the time you see this is there's an opportunity for people to run ephemery uh, Genesis validators. And if you look at client pairs here, you can see, um, 
these are each of the client pairs. Uh, Grandine, Lighthouse, Lodestar, Nimbus, Prism, Teku uh, are the uh, Beacon Chain clients, and Bes Besu, Aragon, Geth, Nethermind, and Reth um, are the uh, execution clients. Now, right now, there may not be support for Ephemery on all of these. Uh, I believe it will come in time, but there is a great opportunity right now for people who want to participate with Ephemery to uh, choose one of these unused client pairs and uh, set up validators, and then you can fill out a pull request to um, host your own, let's see, I think it might be your valid, to host um, Genesis validators with Ephemery. So you can see these are the list of, of folks who are already setting up um, Genesis validators. And I, I wouldn't really consider this a primary motive um, because there's no real profit in it, but there is a very small uh, stipend for people who are offering to run these validators. I don't even know if it would be break even for your hardware, um, but it's just a neat opportunity. Let's see, it's in the incentive program. Um, I haven't actually read the document, but I think they're getting about $12,000 of funding a year. And if you consider there are one, two, three, four, five times five, 25 clients, that kind of works down to maybe $500 uh, a year for everyone just on this grid, but there are also uh, other responsibilities. So at any rate, it's not going to be a lot of money, but uh, what that could offer you is an opportunity to get a foot in the door in the ecosystem um, to show that you are a uh, willing contributor and a participant. Uh, that ends up being valuable in the long run. Um, so, And I have a feeling those will fill up pretty quickly um, because uh, when you find people who want to contribute, uh, they're like always searching for opportunities to do new things. So um, yeah, we'll see. Again, if you did that, you would need to have the technical skills to run a validator, especially technical knowledge of the clients you're using, um, and then um, also have you know the ability to run that server or that whatever you're running on it. You could literally even run it on a uh, like an Intel NUC um, continuously for years. Uh, so it's not for everyone. It does require some commitment, um, but because it's it's permissionless, it's well within grasp right now. Uh, Let's see. Okay, so we are still waiting on uh, Lodestar to get built. It's pretty close to the end. Hopefully it will work well. <laughs> Blame this on my poor editing. Like I, um, I, you know, I, I think I have some kind of Adobe Premiere software, but um, video editing is not my strong suit. Um, if I need video edits, I uh, message JT Nickel. Um, Jeremiah Nickel, and he is a pro. Um, his services are available uh, for hire, but in general, you know, I just, I'm okay. Oh no, that's, I mean, I, I hire pretty frequently, but um, this is just not something I would probably edit. Hey, if you're inclined though, feel free to download this video from YouTube, edit it, uh, and reshare it. I would have no problem with that. Um, I think it's always great how people who want to contribute find any way they can to contribute. So I'm seeing the several, like we had difficulty downloading dependencies earlier, uh, and this is complaining about my network connection. Um, I'm not really sure what to make of that. I'm on a stable, um, wired connection. So I don't know. Um, Hey, so this is great practice for anybody who wants to be a validator. Like one of the biggest hurdles to becoming a validator is 32 ether. Um, but uh, using this practice, you could learn to do validation um, and maybe you're never going to have 32 ether. That's okay. Um, you can always go with a service like rocket pool um, that now requires eight ether. Um, I'm always a huge fan of their work. Um, and Vitalik has recently been talking about a desire to reduce the minimum requirement to one ether, um, which I think is is pretty exciting. Um, I'll tell you that after having been involved with this with the Beacon Chain for probably six years, 
since the organizational calls around 2018. Um, I'm a little bummed that there isn't more streamlined software to do this, that it's still, for the most part, CLI-based. Uh, but there are solutions like Dapnode and Sterium um, that... Um, can can solve the hardware software problem for you and get it up and running quickly. We could. All right, I'm going to switch to another screen. I'm going to do a Control Alt T, or I'm just going to do a Control T, Control Shift T. That'll open a new screen, and I want to see how Geth is doing. Um, yeah, we're having CPU looking for peers, no peers. And again, that's okay. It's just because, uh, the network, this network launched, uh, now one hour and two minutes ago, it can take quite a bit of time and I might even need to check the boot nodes. Uh, that's nothing you'll need to worry about, but, um, that is sort of a way to bootstrap a network. Um, nothing to worry about if it will connect eventually. So I like to tell people, that's great, it's done building. Um, if you don't connect after like four or five hours, just do a restart. Um, but in general, the networks do connect. I know that in the element group um, or matrix group, they were discussing having difficulty finding peers. It's just, it's a common uh, hiccup in decentralized networks. So no big deal. All right. Also, you know, I'm happy to maintain this, but I do get overwhelmed. If you catch something here, an error or something that can be improved or streamlined, um, please do a pull request. Um, I can't really offer you anything for it other than appreciation, um, but it's always great to get uh, your name up in um, a contributor's window. So, all right, so um, lo Loadstar is built. I'm gonna do just one quick test check to make sure that it's there because we spent a long time compiling it. Yep, it's there. Now I'm going to create a system service for it. And now we're going to run it. With this, we have both an execution and a consensus client running. Uh, and they're running on the uh, ephemery testnet. Um, this is iteration 139. And hey, we already have peers. That's great. So... Uh, with that, I can go ahead and press Control C to close this out, and we're going to go on. The next part is MetaMask. I'm going to make this window full size for a bit. And let's see. We're going to go to MetaMask and install it. This whole system is going to start lagging. That's okay. Uh, it's a, it's a light-spec virtual machine on this desktop, so... So MetaMask is just a Web3 wallet. If you're this far, you probably already know what it is, so I'm not going to explain it much. Um, I've been preferring Rebby Wallet a lot, uh, but um, for this use, MetaMask is just a little easier. All right. For some reason, it detected me as Chrome, so I'm going to go back and see if I can get detected as uh, Firefox. Get MetaMask for Firefox. I did click that. There we go. It's downloading and verifying. Uh, MetaMask to install an add-on, yes. Uh, sure, we'll run it in private windows. Okay. And I'm going to click this puzzle piece. And Oh, that's interesting. That's usually just a tick mark. Pin to toolbar. 
All right, so I can see it there. And this is gonna help me set up a MetaMask seed phrase. So I'm gonna to agree to terms of use. Um, you may already have a MetaMask seed phrase. I really encourage you here to just create a new one for ephemerae. Um, I don't really wanna be tracked. I'll let Firefox manage the password. All right, and we need to secure this just because we need that seed phrase. So I'm gonna copy that to the clipboard. I'm gonna press the window key and look for a text editor. And I'm just gonna paste that into the text editor for now. Um, and it's gonna ask me to confirm it. Now, it's really a terrible practice. I'm, I'll actually go ahead and save this for a minute because I don't wanna lose it on accident. You should do the same. Even if it's temporary, just save it. Um, because what I, what always happens, like this virtual machine will crash um, and I will totally lose that. And um, it's true there's no value, but it is kind of irritating when you wanted to keep it. Craft search. Hey, and these seed phrases are extremely private. They are the most private thing in your life, but you're on an, an ephemeral test net, so I don't care. Um, in fact, if you, Essence Ladder, if you want to use my seed phrase and slash my validator, then that's awesome. Like, come do it. Craft surge live glue. You're probably watching the screen saying, come on. All right. Uh, so I'm just going to minimize that. I'll need it later. Okay. MetaMask is complete. Um, I think the easiest thing to do now is to split uh, this into two windows so that I can have the instructions over here. Okay. And let's see if we can get the guide over here. Okay. Um, so set up MetaMask. We've done that part. We're going to go to ephemery.dev and we're already over here. Uh, and we're going to click this add network to MetaMask. Yep. The token symbol doesn't match because, well, it's, it's okay. Again, all of this is testnet. There's no value. If there were any value in this, I would encourage you to slow down and check all of the warnings. Um, but this is literally just for fun, just for learning. Um, another point, I'm not focused on security at all right now. If you were uh, using real ether, of course you would, you would focus heavily on security. But in this case, I'm just trying to show how it works. So that's okay. So right now we have uh, MetaMask on the ephemery network. And let's see, we're on ephemery and we have zero ETH. To fix that, we're gonna go to the faucet and we're gonna do some proof of work mining um, on PK910's faucet. The good news is this is proof of work and it's fun and easy. The bad news is I'm on a low spec VM that's already running some software and it's going to be slow, but that's okay. Come on, MetaMask. Um, ideally, on your machine, this is going to be much faster. Um, all right, so I'm going to copy that. Now, I'm using one seed phrase for everything I'm doing here. Um, that's not really best practice, um, but when you're trying to keep track of things, it does make it easier. Watch me fail to capture it in front of you. Please keep, keep, click each image containing an animal jumping or flying. There's one. Okay, and we're gonna start mining. So uh, this is a proof of work faucet. Um, it's effectively mining um, ephemery ETH. And um, I'm not sure, let's see, how quickly it's gonna go. Maximum remaining in session, average reward per hour, total share, stop mining. Okay, <laughs> we got one in about 30 seconds, so 15 minutes. Um, I may have to stop the video. 
Do you know what I may do to speed that up? Um, I'm not going to encourage you to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and stop those system processes. And I'll go restart those in a moment. Oh, I'm already at six. That's going faster. All right. I really prefer not to stop them. Um, just because it can take a while to get peers and get up and running. But um, I also know like you're not going to want to stare at this river. Unable to get default sync. It's okay. Source. It's okay. Uh, this is uh, the journal for the entire system. It's just journal, journal CTL uh, dash F. Um, and it's following the system journal. The benefit of this is it mixes everything from uh, the journal file, all the system file, uh, system daemon files. So some of it's going to be the consensus client, some of it's going to be the execution client, and then some of it's just going to be like system information. Uh, so load start is synced. Uh, geth, um, let me look for geth. Is that geth with three peers? Load start with three peers, geth. Uh, peer count zero. That's okay. Geth still has zero peers. In my experience, it tends to take um, uh, execution clients a lot longer to get peers, um, and consensus clients tend to have uh, more modern peer-to-peer um, uh, -peer connections, so things go much more quickly. Um, so we're just we. Oh, you know what? Uh, the other trick is I should have thought about this. Uh, the other Faucet uh, just gives you outright uh, 32 ETH. I don't think you have to do any meeting. I like the proof of work faucet when I want, you know, a thousand ETH. But if I just need 32 ETH for one day, the other one is probably faster. Um, Bordell. That's Mario Havel's um, production. Serving from, okay. And enter your address. Let's get it. <laughs> MetaMask, the whole thing is gonna, as, as we get through closer to the end, things are just gonna start moving more and more slowly and that's okay. It was probably already in the saved buffer and I want to go get it again. Invalid sender. Uh, so again, just because the network restarted recently, um, this may not have ether in it yet. Um, okay, so we have enough here. Stop mining claim rewards. Hopefully we'll be able to get them. Processing the claim, sending. Uh, Bordell will probably work by the time you check it. Um, again, this network just launched, so this is about as close to Genesis as you can get. Um, all right, so it should show up most quickly in a MetaMask. <laughs> well, MetaMask, not quick today, but you know. Yeah, great. So um, I know that was a long step, but we now have um, Ephemery Ether. That's set. And now we can create validator keys and deposit data. So I'm gonna slide this one back over here. And I'm gonna to go to this page, okay. Where is, there we go. Um, validator keys and deposit data. So I'm gonna go, this is going to download the, um, a version of the uh, deposit CLI that works with uh, ephemery. Um, and I'm going to press enter to select English. The seed phrase for MetaMask, I have that in a notepad. And there's my mnemonic. And I've created zero keys. I want to begin at zero. And the question here is how many keys have you generated in the past? I've created zero keys in the past. Uh, zero, I wanna create one validator on this machine um, and we're using ephemery. 
and I need a password for the validator. I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, one, two. I do not use this in production, but it makes it easier in testing. Uh, the withdrawal address. Oh no, opening again. <laughs> I might have been smarter to tag this address somewhere else instead of hitting uh, MetaMask to get it every time. Uh, I'm just having it withdraw to the same seed phrase that I've been the same seed phrase address I've been using. Repeat your withdrawal address for confirmation. To paste into this window uh, with the keyboard, uh, whether you know it, I don't know if you know, it's Control Shift V. All right, it's generating my key. Great, and now I can import that validator key. Hopefully that'll work. Successfully imported one of one key stores and looks like a permission error I need to fix. And now we're gonna create a validator service. And now we're gonna start it. So now we have three system services related to this. We have Geth, Lodestar Beacon, and Lodestar Validator. And okay, great we're pending. So this means that um, the validator is up and running, but we still have the 32 ether. It hasn't been deposited to the chain yet. So the next thing we're going to do is make the deposit. Let me see if I can find that other window. Here it is. Slide it over here. And we're going to go to, let's see, make the deposits. I'm going to make, the, yeah, uh, this instruction is just make that, um, deposit file easy to find. Why is there no such da, 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 deposit keys? Or some, oh, okay. Um, I'm going to have to edit this a little bit because it's it references a, a deposit key I made for testing. Um, let me go ahead and do it manually real fast. Um, East Acre deposit. You won't have to do this manually. And I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I'm also going to put it at the home. Uh, really, that's just to simplify finding it, upload it um, from the upload dialog. It's not a necessary step at all. And go to launchpad.ethereum.launchpad.ephemery.dev. Oops, I did something wrong. System is sluggish. Copy link. There we go. I'm used to snappy systems, so I it's hard for me. I'm not good at waiting for slow systems to respond. But we have a lot going on in the background. Uh, everything is going really well. We're going to become a validator. Um, this. It, I, you really need to take time to read through it, but I've been looking at this thing for like three years now, two years. Um, and really, I just get frustrated that I don't know a way around these that I have to click through everything. But it's probably for your own good. Um, scroll down. Really do take time to read it. All right, we're going to do one validator. Uh, we can enter our withdrawal address there. It's just going to check it to make sure it's valid. Uh, you ought to do that. And we're going to have to check a box at the bottom. All right. And now we can upload this deposit file. It should show up. There we go. Uh, this is a deposit.json file that I just moved, that we just created. And now it's going to let me send that deposit. I'm going to connect to MetaMask. And again, like everything I've done here, these keys are all public. Nothing is hidden. Um, I encourage you to use your own keys, but if you want to be funny and slash me, I, I really do find that funny. So um, this is all a game. So please uh, do that. Um, permissions. Do you want it to do the following? Connecting. Balance. Balance. Continue. Uh, one validator, 32 ephemera ETH. I understand a lot of things. All right, and we're going to send the deposit.
Now, if you do this on mainnet with like a ledger, it's going to require a thousand um, like authorizations. But um, doing it on MetaMask without a hardware pass-through. In fact, if you do this on mainnet, if you have Ether like this, you really must use a hardware wallet, uh, like a ledger or um, like a um, a Grid Plus device. Like you must use a hardware device. Do not risk. Uh, having this much ether in an unprotected uh, web wallet. Okay, so the transaction has started. It's on the beacon chain. When we click here, we're going to be able, this is the best time, the best link you'll ever have to go right to your validator. It has your um, validator credential right there. And it was made 40, 24 seconds ago. It's going to take 16 to 24 ether and, or <laughs> 16 to 24 hours until it's visible. Uh, I would bookmark this, control D. Um, and save it and check it out. Um, the last step here is monitoring progress. The easiest way is just to go here. Um, the other way is to monitor your system just with journal control dash F. And that's just going to show you whatever's going on. If you want to view geth, you can do journal control dash F dash U geth. Um, and still no peers and we can check lodestar. Let's start beacon and then control C to stop that. And, and we're not stopping it. We're just exiting the view, the journal view um, and the validator. At this point we have a fully, almost, a geth doesn't have peers. It's okay. It's going to catch up with peers eventually. Um, everything is running just like, oh, that's not our actual, uh, actual service name. Let's start validator. Um, so our validator is up and it's waiting to be uh, added to the validator set and uh, it'll work perfect just when it's done. Um, all right. And one other way uh, you can take your uh, address address from MetaMask if it ever opens. You can copy that and paste it into this block explorer. Now this isn't the regular beacon chain. This is beaconchain.ephemery.dev. Uh, and you can also find your validator that way. It will tell you validators associated with that deposit address. And so ETH1 address, the validator key is what you want to see. Um, and great. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you participate with the ephemery testnet um i hope that you uh if you're a skilled operator that you um join the genesis validator set um if you're a contract developer i hope you throw all kinds of crazy contracts at it what i really want are people who will create poaps related to this because um poaps are my lifeblood um yeah so thanks for your time and i hope you enjoyed it